Welcome to No Budget, the show for filmmakers with no budget by filmmakers with no budget. I am Milo Dennison, and joining me is Claire Milan. Hello. And Cahal Feeney. Hello. And today we are joined by a special guest, Mo O'Connell. She hey. is an. <laughs> She is an, oh, I don't, you like how I gave them a chance to say, say hey, and then I just kept talking when I said your name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Mo is an award-winning actress, writer, director, who has done it all, including starting up a film festival called the Dublin International Comedy Film Festival. Sound about right? Sound yeah, about like yeah, see? <laughs> All right. So uh, the first question is, well, just to take us back to the beginning. What, what got you started in the film theatrical world? Um, well, so I lived in Wicklow, uh, in the Sticks, uh, as a kid, and I loved films, uh, watching them, first of all. And then my dad brought home a big camera. He, he works in ECD. He was a, um, he was a oh, what do you call it, like a a, a lecturer for agriculture and marketing. Yeah. And he had to bring his students out on field trips to farms and he had to videotape them to this massive VHS camera, but he brought it home. And I thought, oh great, I can make my own films. Cause my favorite thing was watching them. So I thought, oh great, I can shoot them. So I started to shoot uh, fairy tales with my sisters and me acting in them. And then sometimes my dad and then friends from around the place that I could get, I'd stick them in. I wouldn't tell them initially that they were coming over just to be in my film. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they'd invariably end up in them, which was good crack. Oh. So I started doing that and you'd have to edit in camera and stuff like that. And uh, so yeah, just good fun. So I started there and then I uh, had to act in them as well. So I used to put on my own plays and things like that. Uh, so yeah, I just kept going. And then I did speech and drama uh, in secondary school and then we won some prizes doing that we also wrote our own stuff me and my friend Maura we wrote our own duologue on the day of the fesh which means competition we were like competing against other um drama schools or whatever so we didn't like our duologue we thought it was rubbish so I said I have this idea for like two wash women cleaner women on their break having a ridiculous conversation <laughs> so we did that it was just really funny and then we won Oh, so wow. that was cool. So then we, so then I just kept going and did film in Ballyfermot. Uh, acted in loads of people's short films. Did Amdram and Profit Share. And then any money I made from acting, I made films. And then I, I ended up in Rada. I don't know, I just mm -hmm. went on the off chance for a, an audition. And then I got in. I think I got in because I wasn't... I hadn't built it up in my head because I didn't. Okay. I was like, oh, I'll just try this. You know, because you're more relaxed and you don't really care about the outcome. So, yeah. That's, and then I was in England then for three years. So you, you just answered a whole, all the questions I had ready to ask. Yeah, sorry. Um, no, it's all right. <laughs> what, was there a point, like you said, you know, when you're growing up, you said, this, this is what I want to do, like, for forever? Yeah, uh, well, I think I think the very, very first thing I wanted to be was a nurse. Oh, really? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I quite like people. And uh, so that was the very first one I was a kid. And um, I was very young. And I was always very underconfident. I always thought I was, because uh, my dad was like, would you not be a doctor? And I was like, well, I just don't think I'm smart. I was like five or something. I, was like, I just don't think I'm smart <laughs> enough. <laughs> um, so that was my ambition, just to be a nurse. And then uh, as I went along, I just, just because it's just from play, from playing, I suppose, uh, just, I really enjoyed it. And then, uh, yeah, it just seemed to be like a good way to spend your life if you can possibly do it. <laughs> so then I was about like 10 or 11, I was like, I think I'm gonna be like a film director and an actor. I was going around telling people that then. Okay. So uh, you mentioned RADA, so that's obviously like a, that's like the gold standard acting school really, like that must, that must have been amazing. What was that like? Yeah, it was really cool. Um, it was uh, really hectic, constantly um, doing loads of different projects at the same time, constantly being challenged, which is brilliant. Constantly being nervous for three years, basically. 
anxious for three years because you're up against well you're not up against them I mean that's a terrible way to say it, but they do like it is very competitive so and they do want the best out of you each individual so so you have to constantly be as good as the people in your year um and that is a good thing i think in a way because you do push yourself then mm -hmm. and then you end up breaking you know breaking walls which is good that you know you might have blocks mental blocks or things like that so they they force you to challenge those blocks and then once you get rid of them then you're freer as an actor you know so yeah it's a great place really, really good but it's very intense very very intense very good um and so and 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 more recent years you have um you've moved back behind the camera i suppose you're in writing directing producing everything um how do you find that is that not like really like, difficult uh, be because i've acted well because you're acting and directing is like i say how, how does that work like you, do you find that difficult in any way or uh, do you mean at the same time or at the same separately? Time, yeah, at the same time. At the same time. No, no, it's actually fine. Like I thought initially it would be hard. I remember when I did Proclaim and that was one of the first ones that I acted in and directed at the same time. And I was prepping myself for Spa Weekend because I knew I was going to shoot the feature. And so I was saying, well, if I can do it in a short, I'll see how I feel. And like I was terrified. I remember being on set and I was in costume in my long skirt and my legs were shaking like jelly. <laughs> I was like, if anyone could just see me, because I think everyone thinks I'm totally in charge here, but actually, like, <laughs> I'm terrified. And, um, but it's fine. It's like, it's, it's that thing, you know, you just jump into the deep end and then you just kind of go, okay, okay, I'll just try to find my way. I'm terrified, but embrace this. And then uh, the thing is, you're, you're trying to make something. So that's always the best advice. Focus on the thing you're trying to do and then you forget about yourself. You forget about being scared. Initially, you'll, you'll feel scared. Your, your, um, your grandmother, wasn't it? The proclaim. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, it, yeah, it was a, yeah. yeah, it was about like the, the printing of the Irish proclamation. Um, I wanted to do something specifically about her, but all of the stories were too epic. So you need a massive budget. So this seemed like an easier one to do. So I just inserted her into the story. It's the only untrue bit in the story. Uh, but she... She was part of coming them on. She did make bullets. She did transport them via potatoes and stuff. So I just put that scene into the proclamation story and played my granny. Um, yeah, so that probably brought me good luck playing my granny. <laughs> she was probably there supporting me. <laughs> so it's an easier yeah. one to do. And you shot in the, the chemist. I think it's closed down now, isn't it? The, the famous chemist. And, and Sweeney's. Then, you know, Sweeney's, yes. It, it's, um, yeah. I, think, I think it was in James Joyce, was it Sweeney's? It's, it's, it's very famous. And it's, it's, I don't think it's there anymore. Or is it closed or? Yeah, yeah it's, it's horrendous. I think they're taking, they're, they're demolishing it, which is unbelievable because um, it, it's, it's a chemist kind of uh, dedicated to James Joyce, um, kind of Ulysses and all of that. And I think he mentions it as well in, in Ulysses and, um, they give read well. They used to give readings all of the time, and at the tour, so it was a famous kind of a famous place, and really beautiful as well. So it's just so ridiculously Irish that we just not we just tear it down, you know, for money's sake. And, and so you oh, made a lot of short so films. I <laughs> didn't you made you made a lot of short films uh, like directing, and you're involved in acting and producing. And then what made you decide? Okay, time to make a feature film now with Spa Weekend. Um, well, so I was uh, in, when I was in London, just before I came back, I, what was I doing? I was writing a play, which is a terrible play, by the way. <laughs> it's really hard to write. And I had it on in the Rada Festival and I was uh, directing the read through of it. But I really wanted to do a feature film and I was kind of frustrated in, in London because with a name like Maureen O'Connell, you kind of only get seen for Irish parts. So, um, yeah, so that was kind of annoying. And if you're quite creative anyway, you can just make your own stuff. But in London, it's difficult. So I just thought I have to get home and start making stuff. And I want to make a feature. Just decided I want to. <laughs> so I got onto Carl Argue, and he's the co-writer on it. Told him the idea, the general kind of outline of it. And he started writing. And then I came home and I wrote, literally, it's almost like half and half. Like, literally wrote half and half. 
and I, I wrote the other half and then uh, did a few edits. Um, and I knew just to keep it contemporary. Uh, so, cause I knew we'd probably sh have to shoot it over a lengthy period of time. So it couldn't be period or anything like that, you know, and uh, slacker comedy, I thought it should, it, it should just be that just because it, it'll take so long to shoot it that we need everyone in a good mood crew and kind of people are kind of just the idea of just enjoying it and um, cracking jokes on set and people just feeling good at the end of the day. Uh, yeah, rather than doing a really heavy drama. So how long did it take that was more How long did it take altogether to make, was it from, from writing it to shooting it and, and editing and having the final product? Um, so, so it ended 2015. So the end of 2015 is when we began it. And then, um, so we fi I finished the edit kind of at the start of 2018, r roughly speaking. Um, and then it was just the, the, the sound edit took ages then afterwards, because we gave it to someone who thought we were going to finish it off there and then they weren't able to. So that took a while to transfer it. And that's why it got a bit slowed down. Uh, when we were releasing it or whatever, you know, so. Um, but yeah, besides that, everything else went really smoothly, kind of. And it did really well, didn't it? It won, um, She's on Fire, you won the She's on Fire Award in Berlin. Was it the female? Yeah. Film in Berlin. And it did really well in the film circuit, you know, and it's it yeah. got good, good reviews, you know. But it, it's like, I, I really admire people like yourself who, you know, act, write, direct, because it is, it is so challenging, you know, and especially during the, the, the coronavirus now in lockdown, a lot of actors are turning to writing and directing and producing, you know, so it's probably yeah. lovely to have a good head start and, and know exactly, you know, um, how to go about it. And, and would, how would you find a difference with, with doing a short film compared to doing the feature? Um, I suppose it's just, uh, it's, it's essentially just a longer version of the same thing. It's the, the structure of it. It's like holding a spine um of an animal that you kind of need to okay so this is a longer spine now you know it's just it's the structure of trying to make sure it's cohesive because uh, you're shooting it over a longer period of time so um it's just making sure all the bits of the story are told it's literally making sure that you've shot kept all the kind of nuances that you possibly can uh within because it is such a short amount of time that you're shooting in. So I only shot for like three or four hours every single time for each scene. Mm. Uh, so that's a tiny amount of time for, because the scenes could be quite long. So you have to be very, very uh, efficient and economical with your time. Mm. And you have to know your shot list and you have to be kind of be able to edit in your head. So you know, you've got, you've told the story, you know, within those four hours, you have those shots, you're able to edit it together and make it cohesive make it as nuanced as you possibly can, but that's really difficult with four hours. Um, get the, you know, get the performances right. And it also has to be funny as well. So it's, it's structure, it's holding all of that together and you have to keep doing that uh, for a full year. So it's, um, how's it different to a short? Just it's longer basically, <laughs> that's it, <laughs> essentially. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, the only thing I can really describe to you is just like holding the spine of an animal that is just bigger. And you have to make sure that everything um, is working, you know? Uh, yeah, I don't know how else to explain it besides that, really. I had a, a, we did an interview in the past with a guy and, and he described making a feature as, it's basically just shooting a bunch of shorts uh, right in a row and then stitching them together was kind of his description of it. I was like, yeah, yeah. kind of makes a bit of sense. <laughs> it, is, it is kind of that. And it, it's kind of making sure the through line that is, that start that is in the very beginning kind of runs all the way through and knocks all the little pieces into their right places and it ends right at the you know so it's, it's literally like an arrow that kind of goes like that and you have to make sure that you're catching it that you're you know shooting all those necessary moments so you can stitch it all together um yes yeah, just longer process but basically the same thing i suppose it must be so satisfying then when you're finished it and you're like, oh my God, I've just made a feature. I'd say that moment of you like, you know, finishing the final edit must have been like a moment of celebration. You know, you have something, you know, because a lot of people think about making features and they never do. 
just have the idea. So I'd say it was, was what was that moment like? Um, well, yeah, I mean, I was, I was really happy. I, I um, but it was difficult because, you know, to kind of really celebrate because everyone, we shot it over such a long period of time that everyone had kind of dispersed, you know, like on a short when you finish something, uh, you know, and then it's a month in the edit or whatever, two months, whatever it might be. But it still feels like everyone's still together in the same mind space. And then you can kind of go out and maybe have a few drinks or whatever. But this was over a year. <laughs> We're shooting it over a year. And then, you know, a good few months in post-production. So it was, I felt like I was just by myself going, yay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I missed the feeling of having everyone kind of focused on it, you know. Mm-hmm. So but it was great and to have what? it in Berlin. Berlin was great. Oh, had a huge party Berlin. in Berlin. So that was <laughs> Neeson, who's the other lead. Um, why a great comedy? Time. Like, why did you decide to make a comedy and not a drama? Like, what what attracted you to that? Well, I I suppose it's just because I knew we'd be shooting it for a while. A uh, heavy drama might get everyone down, like you know, cast and crew and stuff. And uh, I love comedy. I just uh, I don't know. I just I I love I love to laugh. So. <laughs> um, it is, it is tricky though, it's, it's hard to shoot. And, but if you get the right cast, you get the right kind of crew together, it's really good fun to shoot it, uh, which this was. Spy Weekend was a lot of fun to shoot. I mean, we'd all just start laughing sometimes, just breaking and just laugh and just go, what are we doing? Like this scene is ridiculous. We just can't, you know, there'd be so many times just start laughing in the middle of the scene. And I love that, you know, just a sense of camaraderie and the sense of, there's also a feeling when you're making an independent film, especially one like Spy Weekend, that you're getting away with it. Like everyone else is going to their nine to five jobs and we're running around the field at like 5.30 a.m. <laughs> with like barely any clothes on because it's like was the last scene of the film. <laughs> and screaming our heads off. And it just, we all just stopped and laughed our asses off. Oh, this is great. This is a feeling of escapism and joy, I suppose. It's actually, you're, you're showing the film uh, in the Dublin Comedy F- Festival as well, aren't you? As a sort of a out of competition film. So if anybody wants to see it, which I haven't yet, so I'm looking forward to it. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Well, I hope you like it. Yeah, I couldn't possibly put it in, like, in competition. That'd be so funny. Put in my own films. <laughs> and, and win all the awards. <laughs> That'd be deadly. Set up my own film festival. Yeah. I thought about doing that, just setting up my own film festival for my films and then just, you know, <laughs> yeah. all the awards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, uh, well, I kind of put it in as well because there's so few female uh, filmmakers, uh, you know, who have made uh, comedies and like feature comedies in Ireland. So you just kind of like, so I went after as many as I possibly could. I was like, give me your films, mm-hmm. sticking them in, you know, because, <laughs> uh, yeah. Obviously, I want to support, well, I want to support every, everyone, really, but, uh, you know, I think female filmmaking talent needs, needs a push, always. But that's very true, because most of the Irish comedy features I know are written by men. Do you know, if you think about them, like Young Offenders, yeah. The Stag, um, yeah, I, I didn't know, other, but there is, they're written by men, aren't they? That's an interesting... It is interesting, and like, uh, there, there are loads of really funny female filmmakers uh, I don't know what's going on exactly and I there was a big I won't say the name of the production but this big production company that does um, do a lot of comedies and they did like a TV series which was supposed to be funny and they they, they were told to go look for a female director and they're like no nah, they're just as many there's no uh, comedic female directors out there so we have to choose a man, and he's just like, serious? That's not true. Like, I mean, that's so not true. So, like, I suppose, you know, at least with Dublin International Comedy Film Festival, we'll be able to showcase and shout about, you know, female uh, comedy filmmakers and go, she's brilliant! <laughs> so, maybe, you know, there'll be, hopefully, anyway, you know, there'll be more on the radar, on people's minds and that type of thing. Production companies shouldn't be saying that type of thing. That's ridiculous. Not in this day and age, you know, and getting away with it. 
So is that yeah. the main reason behind this particular festival is just to kind of give women a voice or is it more no 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 it's, 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 comedy aspect of it because there's not a lot of comedy festivals or yeah that's the main reason I mean there's no comedy film festival uh, in Ireland which I thought was kind of strange mm -hmm. but um yeah one of the other kind of things I was kind of thinking of was well that's when I heard that story I thought that that was ludicrous you know and I just thought well we can we can do something about that but mainly it's just to have like a a comedy film festival in Ireland, which I think we probably need. That, isn't it? It's crazy to think, like, Ireland is the home of comedy, do you know? <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's such great comedians, but there's no Irish comedy, like, film festival. It's so hard to believe, isn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not. There's also a tradition of our best comedy comedians having to go abroad for recognition as well. Yeah, that keeps happening as well. Um, I don't know. It's a great, it's a great idea. It's a great initiative, actually. Yeah, okay, congratulations. It must be a lot of work, but you know, that's Milo's question. It is, yeah. <laughs> Don't yeah. Well, yeah this, so many emails, very important emails, constantly that you have to keep answering hmm. immediately, kind of thing. Hmm. Well, let's talk about that. So, what is it like to set up a festival? Like, are you on your own? Do you have a team? Like, tell us a little bit about that process of you know going from like idea to implementation? Okay, sure. Yeah, well, I uh, just had the idea all by myself and then I just thought, well, you know, I'll do this. And, and that's one, one of the things, I don't think things through very much. So <laughs> thinking uh, is overrated. Uh, well, <laughs> it can be. I find myself doing things sometimes and I'm in the middle of it going, what am I doing? Why did I do this? I was like, because I didn't think it through. I just went, well, yeah, I'll just do this. And anyway, so here we are. Now I have a film festival on my hands because I didn't think anything through. But it's gone grand, so it's all right. Um, so what did I do? So then I set up a, I set up all the social media pages. I set up a website. I gave a shout out. I set up a film freeway page for it. Um, I set up the awards, um, which are named after other famous comics and that type of thing. I thought it would kind of be nice, you know. And so what are the, what are some of the awards? Uh, so there's the, oh, there's the French and Saunders Award for Best International Feature Film. Uh, there's the Maeve Higgins Award for Best Irish Feature Film. Uh, Deirdre O'Kane Award for Best Irish Short Film. Um, and there's Jerry Seinfeld for Best International Short. Mm. Uh, Larry David, who I love, um, he's uh, Best Supporting Actor. Award. So yeah, there's loads, basically. So it's all these people that I love kind of thing. It's just you and your own doing this, is it? Well, it's me and then I have Emma Fagan from Film, who's brilliant, and she's doing PR. Um, and then I have uh, Emily and O'Callaghan and she's doing, um, she's helping us just uh, choose comics. So we're going to have um, stand-up comedians do a set on each night on Zoom. And then we're going to have some other people do some sketches as well. Uh, so uh, Killian Sunderman and Michael Fry are going to be doing some sketches for the festival. And uh, yeah, so, so that's... That's it. I just kind of thought, uh, you know, the way uh, to kind of encourage comedy writers or say, for instance, Fleabag started as a one woman show, that type of thing. Um, and look, look at what it's become, you know. Um, so it's, it's to kind of encourage comics to start writing, uh, bring producers into the same place where they might be, you know, and uh, celebrate that and encourage it, I suppose, would be the thing. Because you're doing QAs and stuff as well, is that correct? With some of the filmmakers? Yeah, we're doing Q&As as well, that's right. Um, with Michael Fry and Keegan Sunderman as well, they're going to be doing Q&As. And then we're also going to do uh, Q&As, like a round table with uh, the nominees of kind of best short film or uh, best director, that type of thing. So, 
And then, sorry, I want to ask one more logistic question. And it's about like the screening, like, so to, to broadcast all of these films over multiple days, is there a, 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 a logistic aspect to that of making sure that there's enough bandwidth and because I've heard a lot of film festivals that you know did all the screenings in person before and then this year they're having to do online and you hear stories about like people start watching the film and then suddenly everything you know cuts out or freezes up on them like how, how are you planning for that type of stuff how do, how do people watch? Yeah, I mean, I was uh, uh, talking to other uh, film festivals about that. And like often, sometimes there's nothing you can really do about it. Sometimes it's just to do with the internet that whoever the audience member is, is watching from. They might just have weak internet or, or, you know, or bandwidth. And there's nothing that the festival can do. But then sometimes there are, um, you know, um, uh, hosts that they have chosen that aren't necessarily very strong. Um, but they're only, just, I, mean, I, I suppose everyone's learning as they go along. Um, but yeah, so we're having Vimeo host ours. Um, and so, I mean, that's such a massive platform uh, that, that, should, that that should work with regards to just playing the films um, and they won't stop and start. I mean, again, if you have bad internet, it will. Um, but as regards Vimeo as a host, it's, it's incredibly strong so that should work okay for us for the first year anyway that's all we can do for the first year so okay and then is that so uh, and is the plan for next year to do the festival live so people can actually attend in person yeah yeah um i mean that would be the ideal thing to do you know and um it would be in the generator hostel in uh, smithfield um just because I kind of feel that it also has a, a cabaret kind of a feel to it. Do you guys know it? Like, you know, when you go mm -hmm. to an area, you know, they're down those steps, there's a little bar and it just lends itself as a tiny little stage. It lends itself to kind of people gathering, you know, and having a few drinks and stuff. So after people come out and watch a film, they can watch a stand up, you know, and have a few drinks and snacks and that type of thing. And just be a bit of crack. And then like people, filmmakers from, you know, other countries can stay in the hostel. So it's handy that way as well. And it's pretty essential for Irish filmmakers. So yeah, it's a good spot, you know. It's really good. I stayed there for a while and I was looking for a place to live in Dublin. The generator was my go-to hostel. And it was brilliant. Like I met friends cool. for a night in there, do you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love I love the vibe as well. Like the staff yeah. are really sound. Mm -hmm. And did you get many did you get many submissions from abroad? Like yeah 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 we got loads um i had two lovely judges who i won't name but they because they might get you know hate mail <laughs> you know because from filmmakers because films didn't make it but um uh yeah so they um helped me watch all of the submissions so uh how many did we have i think we had about um 200 which was a lot for us because we only when did i start this I only started it just a little while ago i think wow. just in the summer that's so huge. I only started up in the summer. Especially so. for a first year festival, that's massive. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it was cool. And the films are amazing. So. so what is some of the stuff that you look for in a film? Like besides obviously it being a comedy, like are there certain uh, things that you look for, like time limits or qual you know, quality or, you know, what, what gets a film cut versus something that stays in? Um, I suppose it's, you know, it is, it's hard to come. Oh, it's sometimes you just, um, and sometimes we'll have arguments about it as well, you know, me and the other, uh, you know, two judges. Um, but I suppose, yeah, I mean, I hate to say short is, is better, but often that is the case. However, there are some shorts that are, you know, long shorts and they work fine. Um, but most of the time, short is better. <laughs> Um, what else is good? I suppose it's just like original, you know, originality is hard to, you know, come by. It's mainly kind of your own voice being true to yourself as a filmmaker. And that really resonates and we can pick up on that. Uh, and we can, you know, feel that and we appreciate that, I suppose, more. So it's just um, authenticity, I suppose. It's something I really like anyway. Um, and it's also, I also look for rhythm because rhythm is is comedy anyway you know 
timing, that type of thing. But also it's what you put in the frame. I look to see what directors are choosing, like how they're choosing them, how they've told the story visually. And then um, obviously then I really love as a sound design. So I love really good sound design and good um, uh, choice of music as well is really interesting with regards to comedy. And again, where they choose to put it and the timing of it and all these types of things. Um, yeah, like a good filmmaker, you'll see, oh, that is genius, you know, where they put that bit of music. And that music is, is just perfect for the piece, you know. Like sometimes you'll see a filmmaker who's chosen the wrong piece of music and it takes away, they didn't have that music playing, actually it would be funnier. Or, you know, they put in, they put in too many sound effects. They've kind of uh, taken away from the actor's performance because they put in these sound effects which they think are funny, which aren't, you know, mm -hmm. just things like that. Um, I suppose you're you're analyzing and watching all of these things um but they'd be on the like the second or third watch like on the first watch just seeing does it make me laugh that's the first watch all right yeah so how can people find out about the festival and when is it um so the website is uh dublin international comedy film fest.com and on Twitter, it is at Dublin underscore comedy. And sorry, what was the second question? And when is it? Oh, when is it? Sorry, uh, December 3rd and 4th. Okay, so people can just go to the website. Um, and how much is it to, for, for the festival? It's five euro. And that includes the whole thing? The whole thing, mm -hmm. yes. So only five euros. You can go, it's, uh, is it three days? Two days or three days? Uh, two. So it's Thursday and Friday. Thursday and Friday. So Thursday and Friday, five euros, watch tons yeah. of films, attend QAs, uh, and uh, all for only five euros. Yeah, exactly. Right. little ad um, for you there. Right. Little promo. Mm -hmm. you like that? Time. And I did the five with the hand. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Claire, I didn't hear you there. What'd you say? It's perfect timing. Like, we, we need a bit of comedy in our lives now at the moment. Yeah, With I think so. Lockdown. Yeah. And, and so it's, yeah. You couldn't have picked a better time. <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah, absolutely. I think comedy is very uh, therapeutic, isn't it? Like, just laughing at yourself is really good for you. Yeah, well, Claire and Colin, I've had this conversation about festivals this past year, and it just seems like everything that people submit is so depressing. And like there's a yes. lot of downer films in festivals and, and to like, so whenever you do have a comedy come through, it's, it's like a light shining from the sky. It's beautiful. Well, yeah. Uh, well, we, we were kind of saying that for the big festivals, for the major awards, it's always some like, you know, depressing drama about the human condition. And never, it's never, a, it's never a comedy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's always I know. a wheelchair, you know, with one eye who can't walk. You know, <laughs> he lost his parents yeah. or something. You know what I mean? It's it's never like they never win the Oscars, or very very rarely. But but comedy is harder to do. You know, harder to yeah. get right. I suppose, you know. But um, but yeah, I've been to, I've seen a lot of uh, went to a lot of film festivals last year, and you sit down and you come out so depressed because it's all about suicide or drugs. And, you know, and then you get one comedy and you're roaring laughing, and it's just magic, isn't it? Well, it yeah, it is. Woody Allen and it's lovely about. to laugh with other people, isn't it? Yeah, it's, 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 it's lovely to be in a cinema where everyone just is breaking their arses laughing. Yeah. You just feel yeah. so together and it's warm and cozy or something. <laughs> I think Woody Allen I, may be spoiled for people because Annie Hall won Best Film Oscar and he mm. didn't turn up for the awards. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, never again does a comedian yeah, get a Never going to come to you again. No. <laughs> you had your chance. Yeah. I think it's kind of funny though, like, you know, the way uh, you were saying that, you know, they, they're always showing films about the human condition and that type of thing. And they're always kind of dream. But I mean, the best way to look at human condition is through comedy. Because like, essentially, if you boil comedy down, it's about someone really trying to do something. And they screw it up either with outer obstacles or inner obstacles or both. And you get to sit there and watch them. And in, in a sense, you're kind of laughing at yourself because every single human being is trying to genuinely do something in life, whatever it is, you have some goal, whether you're aware of it or not, you know, and you're trying to do it with all your heart and soul, and invariably we're all screwing it up. 
So there's a real sadness there with everyone, but that sadness can be expressed through laughter, but, you know, often the best way is, you know, and um, so you can really look at the human condition via comedy and, um, and the pain of that can be released as laughter together communally and it can just be so much, so much more therapeutic and joyful, you know? So I don't know why drama is considered uh, the king kind of, because it is. Well, we like to end our interviews with one question and, and that is, do you have any advice for our filmmaking audience? One kind of final tip you'd like to provide. So like if, if the audience was filmmakers who want to yeah, make films? Yeah. Like if they want to make films, if they want to get into acting, if they want to follow your lead and be as awesome <laughs> as you are, how would they do that? Okay. Well, I suppose it's kind of like I always say, is it's about a decision. So you have to make a decision to, you know, I'm going to do this. And then you just go about doing it and don't think too much. And often like the learning is doing so you know, you go to these Q&As, you listen to people talk, you can do that if you want, but you don't really learn too much from that. It's mainly you just go about and you just do it. And you find yourself in the middle of like, doing a short where your legs are shaking like me. And <laughs> but you just, you learn from doing it, you know? So just make a decision, make a commitment, and I'm gonna do this and just begin, basically. And you find, you find your way as you go, that's it. Perfect, that's fantastic advice. Uh, Thank you very much, Mo, for chatting with us. And of course- No worries, thank uh, you for asking me. Yeah, it was, it was a pleasure. And obviously, you know, best with the festival. Um, we've got our tickets, well, I haven't got mine. I tried to get mine last night, but it was uh, when we were, uh, when Carl chatted oh. with you. Uh, and so- Oh, yes, uh, so, um, glitch. I, I think Carl, yeah, so Carl's got his. So yeah, yes, got thank you, Carl. He's got hers, so. They're, they're, really they're, the, they're the good <laughs> ones, they're the good ones. Yeah. <laughs> So I'll, but I'll get it as well. And so we're looking forward to watching it this next cool. week. Cool. Oh, thank you so much, guys. Okay. I really appreciate it.